Hi, this is Cousin Russ. Another in a series of uh, uh, workspaces for Family Tree Maker. Uh, today I'm going to focus on the Sources workspace. Um, this is the first workspace when I am getting ready to do some work on a specific um, whatever I'm doing. This is the first workspace that I go to because I want to cite my sources before I enter the data. So and it's also probably the more difficult workspace to work in. Uh, once you get the hang of it and do some, it gets easier, trust me. Well, you don't have to trust me, but uh, anyhow, the works sources workspace is where I'm going to talk about today. I'm doing it first because I believe it's the most important place to start. Cite your source before you enter the data. So this is the sources workspace. There's the icon at the top that is a different color. And if depending on your color scheme that you've chosen in the setup, it will may be different. Mine is orange at the moment. If I change the workspaces, it changes. But so I'm in a sources workspace. Uh, some information about this workspace and I will zoom in and move stuff around a little bit to try to help you see what I'm talking about. On the left side of uh, the screen is source groups. Think about the source groups as a container of information. Uh, the source group is like a box or a refrigerator or something. It contains information. Within Family Tree Maker, you can create uh, templates for each source group. So it is a source template is the correct term uh, where you create, put information into the database uh, that helps define the source and I I do not like the term source citation uh, for family tree maker users the reason why is that's two different tasks that you do within this program you define the source using its template and then you add a citation so the list of source groups are the list of record groups that uh, you may have in your database, and I, I'm i going to select the uh, 1900 U.S. Federal Census. Now, there, you can't see it on my screen very well, but there's a check mark uh, on the icon, and that tells me that that citate, that source is in using the template feature. I want to go to the planned workspace uh, only to point out something I'm going to click more and about. And then I want to move this more information so where you can see it where there's 53 sources, 53 different containers of information, and all 53 are in the template feature. And I want to talk about that uh, right now. So I have selected one, but what, what I want to do now is go over to the other side of the screen, and I'll zoom back out a bit. But there is the term that says that this is using a source template. So. Uh, this is all of my site. All of my sources are in the source template feature so that my reference note is as close to evidence explained as I can get it. Now, a couple things that I do uh, when I pick up this source from a place like ancestry.com, I'm going to use the notes feature. Down at the bottom, the bottom left panel, right panel, center panel, 
the bottom of the center panel is a tab called Notes. I copy and paste the data from whatever website that I'm getting data from, and I paste it here so that I don't have to go looking for it again. I don't have to be online to look at it again. I have it in my database. There's a place for it called Notes. Now, people use notes for different reasons, uh, but I copy the data from the website. I copy whatever I can pull from the website. In this case, is everything down to and including the description of the collection from Ancestry, and I put it here because there's data in this notes field that I need. Now, I'm going to go to the upper right-hand corner and there's a pencil icon, and I'm going to open this window up. Now, this is the source template feature. Uh, this is where the refrigerator is defined. The book is defined. In this case, it is a census record. And I've done a number of blog posts on how I select the source template. I'm not going to go through that. I have selected the 1880 to 1940 census by year and location. I find it's easier for me to work with my database when I'm using the census year and the location, in this case, by state. So I have filled in the data that says this, the census year, the uh, state, the word county. Now, in Family Tree Maker, I want the word county within the citation. Um, but and but Family Tree Maker does not add that word county, so I add it in the county field. The publication number, remember I said a couple minutes ago that that information is down at the bottom, and it is. Uh, I saw it a minute ago. There it is over here. That that roll number, that publication number, is down in the notes section, which is why I do just exactly what I'm showing you. I don't have to look for it. It's right there on my screen. Uh, roll number. The roll number is right here in the notes field for the citation. I got it from Ancestry, not Ancestry.com, but I got it from Ancestry. The database publisher is not an issue, but I put in the, the full database publisher, which is also down here. Uh, the publisher's location is Provo, Utah. The database is 2004, and that is in the notes section just below the screen. And I put the URL. Now, I fill in the comments. Now, this is a reminder for me of the data that I need to pull in from the image for the census record. This if information is usually not on the record itself, the, trans the abstract of the record, but you have to go to the image itself to get this data. So I just copy, this is something that I put in my site on the source template. And the square brackets mean I got to enter data in there. It's the editor comment. Uh, but I give myself clues. So what I would do if I'm entering a new citation, I'm going to highlight and hit Control C. I'm going to cancel this. And I'm going to do a new citation. If I had a new uh, census record, the 1900 census record for the state of New Jersey, I have the data that I need to pull off of the image to put into my citation. I'm going to cancel that because I don't want to do anything. <clears throat> what I want to read, bring up again is that I know, because I spent some time doing this, the information I need to pull off of the image to put into the citation detail. I'm going to close that, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit on the right-hand side of the citation detail. 
Now, this is the citation detail for this record. Uh, and it follows the format that I just showed you. And it defines from largest to smallest, largest being 1900, federal census, state of New Jersey, uh, Burlington County, which is up at the top. You see right there, Burlington County. So I'm going from the federal down to New Jersey to Burlington. Within Burlington County, this was in Chester uh, Township uh, in Morristown, the town of Morristown. Oh, by the way, that image is right down there. Oh, you can't see that. I'll, I'll show it to you later. <clears throat> but this data came from the image itself. The enumerated, the, I put in the supervisor district. In fact, there's uh, a typo, which I will fix right now. Now, the supervisor district is not in evidence explained, but I found in working with the 1940 census that I really needed to know the supervisor's district for that census record because we were able to find the. My experience is that the supervisor district does not change as frequently as the enumeration district changes. So I capture it so I know what supervisor district is. And then when I use the census year before or after, I know where that census record, what supervisor district that location was in. I capture it. It's on the record itself. I capture it. I record it. Uh, I'll get a hand slap from Evidence Explained. Uh, but I'm not also publicizing public publishing this citation on any um, formal document. Uh, but it is I, I've gone from the township to the town to the supervisory district. Next piece is the enumeration district, and I get that number off the sheet. In this case, sheet number 20A. It was penciled. But on the specific image, it had a number that was stamped, 206A, and it was stamped on uh, the image. So I record it. <clears throat> and continuing the largest to smallest, uh, on this census image, it said it was 18 East Oak Avenue, dwelling number 407, family number 417, lines 47 to 50. And I put in the head of household's name. I'm using, uh, in all of my citations for um, a census record, I go by head of household. Uh, you notice that this line number ends in 50. And I'll show you why in a minute, but there's the household, head of household. And I also used, uh, captured the microfilm number, which again is in the notes section. Uh, if I can't find it, I know what microfilm number it is. I can go to another website to get that uh, microfilm number. The citation detail for me is the detail for the reference note. And I'll show you that in a, in a second. Because what I'm going to do now is scroll down to the citation text field. And you'll notice that there's no check mark here. That is on purpose. I use the citation text field for my knowledge. I don't publish it. It's not included in the reference note. Um, I record who the record was for, and most importantly, I captured the date of which I accessed that record, that online record. And this is a space colon space accessed and the date. Uh, because I, if something happens, I may need to copy and paste that. Down a little bit further, is the uh, link to the web address. 
And if I were to click on that button right there, it would take me to the website. You notice there's no check mark in front of that link because I don't want that URL into my reference note. And down at the bottom is reference note. And that is an evidence explained as close as I can get it. An evidence explained reference, full reference note. I don't have control of what it's called, just like I don't like the term source citation. But uh, again, I the, the, the creation of the reference note, some of it comes from the template field that I showed you earlier, but most of it is from the citation detail. Uh, the citation text is for my knowledge, and I may put other notes in there, but there is my uh, reference note. Now, there's another feature just a little bit further down that screen on the, on the right-hand panel that says View Source Online. That comes when you do a web merge in Family Tree Maker. So in fact, I have multiple ways to get back to that image that I have on my computer. Uh, it's, a, it's a mouse click away, so no matter where I am, I can get back to that image. All right, let me, uh, I'm trying to go a little bit faster here. So you see that the, I think, I hope you see the importance of using the notes field, I copy and paste from the website and I put it in, I just paste it right in here so I can, I use pieces of all of this to work on my uh, citation. Now, the other tab is the media tab and there is that image. And I, so it's always available to me right from here. And if I were to open it, which I won't, it would. I will see all the information that uh, is in that came from the website. The two tabs over to the left is the links. So <clears throat> this page of the census record gave me thirty-nine links to facts. And if I go through this, you'll see that there is one person, there's two people, there's three people, four people, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten people with facts that have been linked to this citation. I like to call this one citation to many people to many facts. This is unique for Family Tree Maker in that I can go to one place and see who is using that citation. Uh, I think it's a cool feature. Um, I like it. Now, uh, but that's my personal opinion. Now, I showed you in the citation that it was lines 47 to 50, and it was on page 20A. If I click on the next citation, you will see that this is sheet 20B, the next page, and line one. There's one person with many facts. So in fact, the family was across two pages uh, in the census record. And the second page of the image, the second image page is in the media uh, tab. I pasted the notes there too, and the links to um, the links to the various people and facts. So I craft the citation first, then I enter the data. Now, if I do a web merge, when I do a web merge. Uh, a lot of the facts are uh, already linked, uh, but I have talked about how I do the web merge in the past. Uh, 
this is the sources workspace is probably the more difficult to work with. And that's mostly because of the citation, the crafting of a citation. I spent a lot of time working on in this workspace, but it is the first thing that I record when I bring data into my database. So that's in the sources workspace for Family Tree Maker. Hope it was, some, it was helpful to you. If you have any questions, leave a comment either on the blog or in the Cuts and Russ work, uh, Google Plus community. Thank you very much. Have a great day.